Okay, progressive web apps. And uh, I tried to create today's session uh, very beginner friendly. Uh, at the same time, if you already work with uh, PWAs, I bet you will learn something new. Uh, and after all, I uh, uh, provide lots of um, like personal thoughts, personal opinions on that topic. Okay, let's um, let's go. Today's uh, main um, what we start from uh, today is uh, some motivation. Why do you ever uh, might want to know about progressive web apps? Uh, I heard uh, at one like conference or like uh, some some Twitter presentation. Wow, PWA is it's so 2019 ish. Is it still relevant? Is it still a big thing? Yes. And uh, as I mentioned, some practical hints, some practical uh, directions for you to either start or dive deeper into the topic. Uh, Darren already introduced myself uh, and just a few extra um, words. I'm a big fan of dev communities. I organize lots of uh, events and uh, including full-scale conference fully dedicated to progressive web applications. Maybe you attended uh, last October PWA Summit and uh, stay tuned for uh, this year's edition. And I organize developer communities here in Oslo where I live. Um, I work in Microsoft uh, as developer relations specialist. It's my pleasure to introduce cloud to the developers. And um, yeah, let's stay connected uh, even after our today's session. Uh, Webmax RU is the simplest way to reach out to me on Twitter. My direct messages are always open. And if I do not answer some um, questions today, just uh, not enough time, always feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. My great pleasure to stay connected with you. Um, let's start from uh, like motivation, inspiration, some numbers. So is PWA gaining popularity and gaining traction? Yes, uh, latest edition of um, Web Almanac. I recommend you to read this uh, report very, uh, very carefully. This is really interesting snapshot of, uh, of web uh, created every year. And um, I, uh, I'm proud to um, participate in writing chapter about progressive web applications, or like uh, writing and reviewing. It says uh, over 3% of um, the web addresses from the sample that uh, Web Almanac scans, it's around um, 7 million addresses, uses service worker. And uh, we can um, approximate that these are progressive web applications because service worker is a hard engine brains of, uh, of PWA. And these three percent actually serve almost one fifth of, uh, of the traffic of the page loads. That means that uh, quite uh, large websites, quite popular ones are going into that technology. I think these are quite inspiring numbers and of course they are growing from year to year. Um, let's uh, put head of uh, either personal web developer or some business that needs uh, an application and let's pretend that we want to build an app. Uh, as I mentioned, by we, it could be uh, like multiple, mul multiple entities starting from, from ourselves, like, uh, for example, hobby developers. And uh, by application, we mean some experience, let's say a bit more prominent than maybe maybe web page. And what do I exactly mean by uh, good application? First, it, it should bring value to the users, right? So uh, definitely we need some, uh, some interesting features for, for people to get engaged with this application. Um, so they use it for, for some purpose. And the uh, application is not running uh, like separately, right? It's always within some environment. And uh, I mean, um, um, by platform, I mean a pretty broad definition of, uh, of that uh, idea. Uh, second, if we created super duper awesome application, we have to uh, give some chance to people to find it. Uh, and uh, um, after they uh, tried this, maybe for, for the first time, it's always a good idea to keep it uh, somehow available for people. And uh, on that sense, having something installable on user device is um, one of 
keys to, to success because yeah, uh, web address is uh, one thing and to um, go back to this, uh, let's say, web, web project, web solution, web service, whatever, uh, you have to open the browser, you have to remember the URL or scan to favorites, it's too cumbersome, right? But if there is icon on the desktop or uh, home screen, if you talk about mobile, mobile device, completely different feeling. And uh, plus, uh, what about having some extra ways to reach out to people, to re-engage them, for example, by leveraging web push notifications. Um, and last but not least, it should be just pleasant to use this app. So it should be uh, as uh, performant as possible uh, with uh, the best possible user experience uh, without um, all this, you know, um, um hiccups uh, freezes whatever so we want to uh, really delight our dear users so what are the options for us for building to build the applications maybe the most uh, um okay this a few years ago it was definitely uh, let's say most of the solution to go and build what we call native applications and um, what are cons of this approach? Well, if we talk about native, there is no native for every single platform, right? It's always native for the particular one, if we talk about, let's say, classic approach. And if we want to build uh, our awesome app for iPhone, welcome to onboard um, iOS dev team, uh, pro professionals in uh, Swift or Objective-C. Uh, completely different set of skills for Android, uh, third set of skills for desktop applications. Um, well, as um, like uh, as many platforms as you support, so um, you need this number of teams of developers to build and later support this application. Um, next, if we talk specifically about mobile platform, uh, in the big picture to gather some users of your application, you have to deploy it to App Store. And uh, this is the next, uh, uh, let's say, border between you and the millions of your potential users. Uh, and uh, going deeper into that topic, um, stores are picky. And uh, I will not call like specific names, right? Uh, but some stores, uh, for example, they are quite uh, tough on uh, accepting applications. And uh, a few years ago, there was a huge uh, hype, um, negative hype around uh, uh, template-based applications were just prohibited. Then they softened the rules a bit, but still they are not big fans of um, constructors. So um, the idea, I will use template, will change my logo type, will change uh, about text and deploy it to App Store is no longer working at a, in a big picture. Uh, other stores are full of, um, let's say, low quality applications. And uh, it brings next uh, cons that it's super fun. Uh, even if you're in App Store, uh, one of uh, potential App Stores, uh, one for every platform, quite difficult to um, attract people to your applications for multiple reasons. Like there are like, maybe maybe too many applications, right? Uh, on the same topic. Well, it doesn't guarantee that you will get uh, users. And um, if it's something uh, related with business, uh, if you get some uh, money for um, in, in return. Um, option number two, uh, we have awesome set of cross platform frameworks, right? And uh, I will list logotypes uh, maybe someone remembers the the first logotype which uh, framework it's is it for uh, just uh, send the chat message if you're from uh, from that uh, time of uh, of development um yeah anyway it's always kind of uh, compromise uh right um we use one technology for for building application that um, is like intended to run in a non-native environment, right? And uh, for, let's say for every of these framework, the compromise is, uh, and the, the set of pros and cons is very different. So sometimes you get uh, like really huge bulky uh, application package while it could uh, wait a few kilobytes. Uh, sometimes it's just not performant enough. Sometimes uh, it's optimized for particular platforms, but not for the web itself. Yeah, lots of trade-offs. Uh, 
And it brings to the question, is it really future-proof? Um, I asked about the first uh, look at that from, from the left um, uh, for, for a reason, because this framework is no longer under development. Um, and um, yeah, if you have skills there, they are no longer relevant on the market. And yeah, I can tell that this is, uh, this is closed over. Maybe the pioneer in building um, web experiences com compiled to native applications. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, for different frameworks, this works slightly differently. And in reality, what they promise, write runs, uh, write once, run everywhere, is not uh, that. It's not, let's say, not one hundred percent true. Or we have option number three: true, clear, pure web, um, which is pretty much everywhere, right? Uh, so you'll find some, uh, I don't know, some web views on um, fitness bands. Um, developers who build engines, they constantly improve performance of, uh, of, of, of these um, places where we can actually run our code. Um, for quite a few years, we can access hardware, and this is really great integration point of uh, our application and underlying platform hardware in that sense. Um, for business folks, um, we have all APIs available now to accept payments and to authenticate people. This is actually driving force of uh, pretty much all technologies, sales, sales, sales. Um, and uh, talking about your personal investment of uh, time to learn, it's definitely more future-proof than uh, everything else. So web stays with us, web stays forever, and um, like at least foundational knowledge, you can always find where to apply this. Uh, a bit elaborate on web as uh, application platform, like more uh, more pros, more advantages, more benefits for you from uh, from myself. What I what I discovered and experienced um, uh, myself. Evergreen browsers. And now we don't care that much about which particular version our user users running because it's uh, auto updated. Of course, yeah, I'm not saying about some exceptions, right? But I'm um, let's say about um, mainstream users. Then we had one language for uh, web. Now there are multiple. Um, yeah, I'm. Uh, by one language, I meant uh, JavaScript, but now with rise of WebAssembly, we can use multiple other languages uh, that are still native for the web via WebAssembly. Tooling is the best in, in class. Um, IDEs, frameworks, libraries, uh, majority of them are free, open source, just great pleasure to um, work in that scope and uh, even greater pleasure to be part of huge community where you can find um, answer on any question where you can solve any issue by just you know browsing a, web, uh, a, a bit or uh, sending a question on Stack Overflow. And of course, let's be uh, uh, let's give a full picture, right? There are a couple of uh, at least couple of um, uh, disadvantages mainly related to historical uh, reasons. Web was not invented as application platform and uh, it relies too much on being always connected, right? You type URL um, for a couple of seconds for whatever reason you are not online, you hit enter, you see offline dino server not found, something like this. While um, application you use somewhere in the browser cache, right? So there is no just a proper connection. Uh, um, there was no proper connection. Now we have this. And um, it's a bit challenging to reason about, let's say, classic web sites, web, uh, web projects as applications, right? Because I already mentioned that it's super great idea to have it installed to give user more chance to return to your application when they want and to do it immediately without any like intermediate steps like, like opening the browser and typing your URL. Okay, let's uh, investigate a bit how we can um, uh, mitigate this uh, disadvantage. And um, yeah, time to finally introduce progressive web applications. 
I really love definition that uh, was on MDN, Mozilla Developer Network, uh, maybe uh, like a year or two ago. Now it's updated uh, slightly, but I still feel that uh, this uh, the previous definition worked better because it explains uh, both what and why. But it, first it starts with how. Uh, progressive web apps use modern browsers. You do use modern uh, APIs of these browsers. Uh, why? First, to bring best possible experience for the users and to bring extra benefits for developers. Um, like, like really write once, run everywhere. Save uh, on your efforts, time, money. Um, and uh, it's really good idea to remember that this is not a framework. This is not a library. Uh, I can hardly can even call it a methodology. Maybe this is just an uh, idea or uh, useful design pattern. There is no kind of formalized standard. And uh, the best part is it really works everywhere natively. Maybe not everything, but if you folks work with web front-end development, you know that uh, it's not something exotic, right? Uh, we generally don't care about that so much because we have also a mechanism called progressive enhancement uh, driven by feature detection. So uh, if users have uh, new and updated and latest modern browser, they get full experience. If for some reason uh, this particular feature is not available, well, it's just not available. It doesn't crash, it doesn't ruin general, the core application experience. Um, Native-like experiences, just uh, a few of them to list for, for you. First, it's all related to smarter and better and smoother networking. Uh, maybe this is um, one of the core ideas of progressive web apps, um, plus full support of offline experience. Literally, once you visit a particular URL, next time you open the browser, uh, you type in the same URL, and uh, if this is properly created PWA, and we'll learn how to create proper ones, you will just uh, get straight to the application without any server not found or, or whatever. Of course, um, not for um, every kind of applications uh, you can build like full offline experience, right? If, uh, um, if it's uh, only rely on fresh information from network, but there is uh, lots of categories of the applications that can definitely bring value to their users without uh, any kind of connection. I'm uh, talking about, for example, text editors. And uh, right now in one of uh, parallel tabs, I have uh, web front end based uh, graphic editor, um, kind of clone of Photoshop that works offline because it doesn't need any, any connection to provide core features. Um, then we have chance to reach out to our users via notifications and uh, it also brings value to, to lots of uh, lots of people uh, for example yeah you can be reminded that uh, your check-in uh, check-in for your flight is available uh, without need to keep this uh, airline application airline website always open and ready and without need to install native application of uh, native application of this airline. Uh, plus uh, lots of interesting experiences with uh, possibility to run some code in background. Uh, and again, maybe the main power of uh, progressive web app here is the, the code can run without having your uh, <clears throat> main application open and even without um, uh, having visible part of the browser open. And of course, proper application experience. Uh, by the way, if you wish to um, get even more inspired by um, the latest and greatest APIs available in your browser, visit a website called What PWA Can Do Today. Um, yeah, it just lists um, all, all the APIs, plus it gives you understanding is this particular API working in your current browser where you open this website. Just interesting resource for you to know. Uh, so after all, what uh, will it take for us to, con to, take, um, to convert our, let's say, classic web front-end app, consists of uh, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, maybe some graphics, um, to what we can call progressive web app. First and foremost, HTTPS only. I hope that uh, you folks switch to HTTPS, all your projects uh, for, uh, for a long time ago. This is 
um, just uh, kind of industry standard these days, so it shouldn't uh, be an issue at all. Next, to provide offline experience, which is uh, crucial for uh, calling your application progressive one, and to provide lots of other interesting features, you have to provide service worker. Uh, and after all, to compile everything to what we can ever call application that has its own name, own icon, and some other meta information, you have to provide one more uh, file called, uh, not, not called, but that follows web app manifest specification. Um, super quick about what uh, else you can do to have even better offline experience of your application. I already told that application itself, no doubt, should be available offline. Um, yeah, then let's say 99% of web front-end apps consume some data from, uh, from network during runtime. It could be API calls, CDN calls uh, to first-party servers, third-party servers whatever and uh, we now as developers have all chances to smartly collect serve and reuse this data while keep full control over this so it's no longer about um HTTP cache so HTTP cache is still there but it works on way lower level than uh, we can reach out from uh, javascript uh plus um, actions and data user produce while they are offline should stay uh, and uh, be propagated to the servers, uh, maybe on the first occasion of the connection without losing any single byte. So this data is super valuable. Um, and in general, we now have all tools to mitigate consequences, for example, of, of um, experience of flaky networks when connection goes up and down, slow, uh, fast, um, absent, present. Now we can, um, there is no magical internet channel, right, uh, in PWA, but, but uh, we have all the tools, all programmatic tools to preserve data, to smartly send data automatically, and to provide all status update to our dear users. Um, updates themselves, well, we all used to the way how mobile native applications update themselves in background. We can now have same experience for web apps. And uh, yeah, we uh, have full access to majority of platform features, both hardware and software. Um, going a bit closer to practical part of the things. So let's focus on, uh, on, the, on the first point from that list, how to make application itself always available, offline ready, offline friendly. Um, well, we have to build what's called application shell in uh, service worker, uh, universe source worker uh, definition um, and what it takes from us sorry just uh, yep first we have to understand what actually constructs our application then we have to store it somewhere and there is special cache called cache storage available in all modern browsers and then just uh, last point we have to serve it from cache not actually last one because uh, we have to also provide some mechanism to manage versions we definitely don't want to always serve what was cached at the very first time for the last three points um, uh, there is one api uh, that is responsible called service worker i already mentioned this uh, multiple times today um, Physically, I call this physically. This is a file, right? Uh, JavaScript uh, based on um, events. So all the payloads we have in Service Worker wrapped into some listeners of particular events. This is uh, nature of Service Worker. This is nature of its life cycle. And logically, this is kind of gateway between your application and all external world that smartly intercepts all outgoing requests and if we involve cache into our algorithm into our uh, flow of course it delivers this uh, possibility to provide offline experience plus um, yeah just to, to illustrate there are many more other events we can uh, listen and react correspondingly in our service worker um well few lines of code very schematic just uh, for for illustration um what will it take for from us to create our own service worker well i already mentioned that everything wrapped into some listeners 
and uh, one listener called install where we actually put assets into the cache uh, using cache API. Uh, on activate event, we manage versions. We check if something was updated on the server, then uh, we can fetch updated one and replace what we have in the cache. And fetch event, this is where um, we intercept all our going HTTPS requests from the application, both explicit ones done via fetch or uh, XHR ex um, um, request and implicit ones uh, like navigation requests or for example the ones you have in your HTTP, HTTP markup like uh, if you reference for example image or CSS file there and um, well it uh, it sounds pretty obvious but in reality every listener will contain uh, let's say quite a few lines of code maybe um, maybe a few hundred if you want to have something in production because you have to care about uh, lots of things, even for, let's say, hello world dish application. Um, I will list a few of them. We definitely uh, will not dive deeper into this, let's say, challenge. This is not intention of, uh, of this talk. And still, something can go wrong. I, from my experience and from um, many developers' experience around me, I can say that it's super easy to deploy let's call it not perfect service worker that will not um, actually improve your application your user experience but vice versa it will ruin even core one um, so and the users will see either some old version of the application or um, white page and some red lines in the console just because you forget forgot about one of these points um, well is there a helper to optimize latest three points? Yes. Uh, and the helper called library workbox. And actually one third of uh, service workers deployed in while, again, back to web almanac um, report, are based on workbox. Uh, basically, there are not so many uh, noticeable competitors to, to this library. Of course, uh, it has its own pros and cons, right? Uh, when there are competitors, you develop uh, more more uh, intensively. But I cannot complain. Workbox is a perfect piece of software. And uh, it has lots of benefits. Um, so you see only a few of them on, um, on your screen, starting from very nice, uh, very thoughtfully architected um, abstraction level that extends your service worker by um, production grade features that will really simplify all your um, dev journey. At the same time, you keep full control over every single detail because uh, thanks to very developer friendly architecture, you can uh, plug in uh, to some, let's say, lower level details of, of this library. So you have all proper hooks, all proper places to inject your custom code if you need some custom um, behavior. And um, yeah, after all, it's open source. It's under very active maintenance. I, now it's uh, version six that is stable and uh, version seven is coming. And um, yeah, the community around Workbox is also very open, friendly, and a great pleasure to both use this library on, on technical side and communicate with people who develop this, who support this, who use this. Um, and um, going back to some code samples, in case of Workbox, it's um, simp as simple as providing few few methods to have a core offline experience. So to organize fully fledged application shell that auto caches, auto service, auto updates, you literally need one method called pre-cache and route. Then if you want to smartly um, save and reuse the data you, um, you, or your users fetch from APIs during application runtime, there is another method from um, Workbox, another module. It's, it has module-based structure where you literally in very declarative way explain, um, describe behavior. So for, um, and this uh, four lines say for uh, all outgoing requests that include API in the address, please apply particular caching strategy called stale while revalidate. 
at the same time in, in the same code sample i want to illustrate that uh, it's after all your own service worker and you are free to add more listeners uh, while your pwa is uh, evolving and while uh, the standard is evolving because uh, more and more events are coming to service worker api to provide uh, next uh, pieces of functionality um, unfortunately this session is uh, too short to provide deeper technical details about how to start with workbox but no worries this is the link where you can find um, session from from myself all uh, like around 45 ish minutes with all the technical details how to start literally uh, take this code sample take this code, code sample plus it uh, includes slides and maybe uh, those of you who are like let's say uh, more or less experienced web front-end developers you can just uh, uh, take slides and no even need to watch the video plus source code of the sample application so everything is there and we move on so we fixed one of the issues i listed right that web is too dependent on connection status and now we know how to provide proper offline experience at least this core part of, uh, of offline experience uh, available or um, availability of the application itself but what about second uh, disadvantage that uh, web is somehow working within uh, browser context right it's a bit challenging to reason about uh, our web projects as about applications on, on multiple levels so what kind of integrations do we have so far uh, for our web front-end projects well there are a whole list of what's available right here right now um, i uh, organized this in a few categories and we'll go a bit deeper through a couple of them it all starts with the installation. I mentioned uh, a few times during today's session that um, we want to build web sites, web apps that are installable. Uh, and um, this is just beginning of, uh, of the story, right? By, uh, you, you will see what I mean uh, on the next slide. Next, we are talking about web front-end apps which, uh, that actually have user interface right so we build these applications for uh, for humans this is why we have to provide the best user interface um, uh, possible and um, again applications they follow the rules they they play the rules of um, of environment where they start operating system uh, to be more precise and uh, what's possible for organizing proper um, like uh, boxing of uh, of our UI or windowing in more uh, technical term, then um, how to organize connection or binding of your app with um, underlying platform. And uh, here we have both um, outbound, let's say requests and wishes from uh, how to use some pieces of um, platform from our application and inbound uh, if, um, um, platform itself wants to somehow start our application in uh, let's say non uh, non regular way what are possibilities there um, native notifications it's super important to emphasize that they should be native that should be part of the platform not part of just your application ui background tasks we already went through some of them and of course access to hardware so these are categories uh, for you to check um, when you create progressive web application of course i'm not saying that you have to include everything from that but this is just more what's available now for you um, briefly about uh, installation installation crit criteria is uh, following these dates service worker with at least event called patch by the way if you use uh, workbox of course it includes um, all these uh, listeners for for you and web application manifest this is json formatted file that follows a web app manifest specification um, here in the example i listed just um, a few options there are dozens of them uh, and in the big picture this is providing meta information about your um, app like name icons etc and then your users will uh, find icon if like after you deploy it properly 
created PWA, your users will find the icon on the um, address bar. At least uh, it, uh, this is how it works in uh, desktop-based, uh, Chromium-based browsers. And if they click, they will get some dialogue about, uh, do you want to install? Uh, here we go deeper into how that works on particular uh, operating system within particular browser. The experience are, experiences are different and uh, all, browsers, all browser vendors try to deliver the best one with best explanation, best wording, best, uh, best features. At the same time, they don't want to confuse people with maybe, maybe too many options. But uh, this is how it works on um, Windows 10 where you can also, for example, ask system to launch your web application on uh, user login. And uh, after all, your application will take part in um, add remove programs and features. And uh, in case of um, uh, Google Chrome on Windows, this will be just uh, as a Chrome application. Uh, also, you can, uh, for example, pin the application to taskbar to have a um, shortcut on, on the desktop. So it behaves like a native one. Uh, and furthermore, you can uh, do step forward to best user experience and organize what we call shortcuts, um, some um, non-regular way to start your application, um, to maybe pick some feature of, of your application um, that exposed to your users after they right click or uh, long tap the um, application icon. Also, you can uh, set this in the same web app manifest file. Um, about windowing, lots of opportunities for us as developers. Lots of um, display modes. It could be a full screen, it could be a standalone application without any uh, UI from the browser. Maybe this is the kind of industry standard for uh, modern PWAs when yeah, you just only have your own UI. Furthermore, we as developers recently got opportunity to put controls straight to title bar of the window if we have it, if it's not a full screen experience. That's, uh, that's really something completely new for the web applications. And um, yeah, we have corresponding CSS variables and the corresponding JavaScript APIs to put some, I don't know, buttons, inputs, text straight to title bar, uh, straight to the native title bar of the native window. And uh, maybe on the very cutting edge of uh, window experience, we have um, opportunity to organize multiple tabs for our app. Um, since this is quite experimental feature, users, users will get some, some extra confirmation um, request. Uh, do they really want? And uh, from my experience, this is not working perfectly yet. So you see some texts are like uh, clashing with each other, but it's definitely coming. And it's uh, completely, you know, a new opportunity for developers to use native browser tabs as a part of their applications. Um, briefly about uh, bindings, uh, what do I mean by inbound? For example, we can register our own protocol instead of HTTPS to open our application. We can associate installed web front-end application with file extensions. Just imagine you, you double click uh, .mp3 file and it opens not native uh, audio editor, but the one you created using web front-end technologies. And um, on Alpine side, we have um, interesting opportunities to call native dialogues, for example, about sharing, about picking contact. And uh, of course, uh, maybe the most exciting part here is access to file system straight from your JavaScript code. Uh, to give you direction how to start with uh, building your uh, best ever possible web application manifest, I emphasize, uh, I, I highlight project uh, by my colleagues from Microsoft called PW Builder. It contains uh, very uh, like, let's say a very handy set of um, uh, helpers for you to start both with a web application manifest and service worker. Um, and to sum up and uh, to give you like, some, some inspiration, uh, inspiration, sorry. Uh, web application is really, is, is a real application platform uh, and uh, all core mechanisms to provide at least offline experience are ready and in production in all browsers. Um, web applications are real applications. I hope I uh, illustrated this with a few samples from my recent slides. And let's keep user needs, user um, experience, and of course security and 
privacy uh, in the focus while we architect and build our applications. And I always say, I say it uh, for many years on a slide like this, it's just the beginning because like there is no stop to the stream of new APIs and new features coming to web frontend. And as promised folks, you are really lucky today because uh, exactly this week we, uh, by, by saying we, I mean me, my colleagues from Microsoft and some folks from uh, PWA community, started completely new project, learning project, educational project called 30 days of PWA. Since February 14, like best day to introduce project to help developers to uh, fall in love with uh, progressive web applications. So since, uh, since Monday of that week, we post a new article about progressive web apps every day during 30 days. Please follow this. Uh, this is a QR code for you just to, to scan to get to the same link if that works uh, more convenient for you. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much it from, uh, from me. Thank you. And uh, I'm super happy to answer your questions. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Maxim. That was a lot of great information. So thankfully we, we got this, we got this recorded. Um, so you all can go back and also I'll, I'll be sharing uh, Maxim's slides um, after the event. So you can also go to the event page for that. Okay, we have a little bit of time for a Q&A, but feel free, um, I, saw, I see a question in there already, but feel free to keep typing in the Q&A box. Um, let, me, let me get the first question. So Ari asked, um, why does this sync arrow points from browser to service worker? I, I, think, I think she was referring to the slide where you had the, you know, logically, physically and logically um, diagram. Um, yeah, 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 I'm not sure if you remember that. This slide. So let me scroll back. To, uh, to that slide. Uh, we, we went really briefly through this uh, explanation of what service worker in, uh, is in, uh, in 30 seconds. Uh, but uh, by this sync fetch push, uh, I mean events that service worker can receive. Uh, already mentioned that fetch event uh, happens in service worker every time applications send some uh, outgoing request. Push is an um, event that uh, service worker can receive from outer world. And this is actually the way to wake it up to show um, notification. And uh, it's uh, the, the main idea of service worker is, is uh, that it's always on duty. So you can close tab with your application. You can close visible part of the browser, but push notification can come at any moment, right? And it's exactly service worker who is receiving this event and showing the notification itself. And event called sync, what's this event about? This is uh, from uh, the family of background tasks and it's part of API called background sync. And this event is um, about one particular moment uh, when the connection either available or restored. And I pointed this arrow from, uh, from the browser because it's browser who is uh, actually deciding are we connected to the internet or not. How it does it, I have no idea. So I'm just as a developer um, can always understand uh, are we connected or not. And exactly using sync event, we can provide automatic propagation of uh, data um, we could uh, save while users were uh, offline. Just uh, to illustrate it on a bit more practical uh, level. You build your um, social media application. Let's say clone of Twitter fully based on web front-end technologies. And of course you, can, you, you want to give opportunity to, to let people to tweet, right? And if they tweet during uh, they are connected, no problem. We call corresponding API, well, it's done. But uh, just imagine connection disappeared like, suddenly and uh, someone is, uh, I'm, I'm tweeting, I sent a tweet, well, like post, send, whatever. And uh, in normal application, I will see something like uh, server not found. And in the best case scenario, the data I tried to send will be somehow preserved, but I have to wait for the connection um, wh while keeping application open and uh, then hit but uh, send the button. With um, power of background sync, we can 
show some message to the window uh, to, to, to the user saying um, unfortunately there is no connection now but the tweet you was uh, you were going to send will be automatically sent right after connection restored and it's safe to close application now it's safe to close visible part of the browser because um, all browsers um, at least all chromium browsers try to keep some uh, small uh, part running uh, in the background and in, in let's say default scenario when you close when you hit close button the browser is not disappearing from memory completely and again this is uh, just to always be on duty so the, uh, and uh, right after connection restored exactly sync event comes to service worker and the service worker we have to have a code that for example iterates through some uh, data storage uh, where we hopefully carefully preserve to the data that user tries to send and it could be not one tweet but multiple tweets it could be even some uh, blob data like like image and we just uh, send this request one by one to our servers this is uh, what uh, sync event is about and this is why it's going exactly from browser cool um yeah because of timing we just get one or, or two more um so let me let me get the next one. So Salma asks, can I use camera to scan QR code with a PWA? Yes, absolutely. You can uh, even use um, a camera from your web front end application if it's not PWA at all. So this is quite quite mature API, and this is with us for uh, for a few years. Okay, awesome. And um, Leo asks, uh, do you think PWAs could one day be bigger than native apps? Uh, in some niches, yes, definitely. So there are um, whole categories of the applications that really don't need, uh, let's say, native performance at all. Okay. And um, yeah, I think, oh yeah, Leo has a, has a follow-up question. So do, do you think that due to their accessibility that could help um, reach more people? Um, maybe you already answered that, yeah. Um, well, PWA is, um, is about user experience uh, and uh, of course, um, let's say better user experience contributes to accessibility, but in, in the big picture, um, we rely on the power of web standards, web specifications, if we talk uh, specifically about accessibility topics. Uh, so it's not like uh, purely PWA sync, it's more web in general. And I can say that uh, all instruments are for us, both uh, to build accessible projects and to test and debug accessible projects. Um, yeah, I really cannot complain uh, about current <laughs> state of of tooling here so it's uh, it's nice so I, I i strongly recommend you to explore um, the topic and uh, yeah build accessible apps it um, let's say a few years ago it was a bit painful but now uh, uh, let's say um, yeah there is no reason to uh, to not uh, start building accessible apps from uh, from the from the very beginning i see Okay, yeah, because of time, um, we just want to respect that speaker and, and everyone's time. Oh, let's put a wrap here. Um, sorry if we didn't get to your question, but feel free, um, like, like Maxim said, you can reach him on, on Twitter, on social media, continue to, to ask some of those questions. Um, yeah, and, and I want to just quickly share that we have a next event. Let me put in the chat right now, like everything that, that I'm about to say. Um, yeah, so Maxim's Twitter is on there, as you can see. Um, and the next event is called, uh, we have one that's quite special. It's, it's, it's called Women in Tech, uh, Establish and Grow Your Developer Career. Um, so the speaker is, uh, has been a developer for eight years, I think. Um, she's going to share experience and offer resources to grow um, in the male dominant industry. So if that, if that applies to you in any way, um, please check out the event page, sign up, and it's going to happen next week. Um, all right, so I want to just officially thank you Maxim, again, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to share your expertise and experience with us. And I just want to ask if there's any um, last thoughts or encouragement that you want to share with our audience today. Just uh, continue your progressive web apps learning journey by uh, by joining 30 days of PWA and let's stay connected. 